Hi there and welcome to Yellow Spot Collective's On The Spot. Uh, today we are getting to know the brilliant Alex Marks and Kate Heron a little bit better and finding out a bit more about their work ahead of our event Spot Night. So we're going to discuss five quick questions. Uh, the first of which is, where did it all begin? How did you start? Um, <laughs> big question. Yeah, you can yeah. first. Uh, okay, so originally actually I was going to go to drama school, but then I changed my mind because I had really good film studies teachers and I guess they taught me, I don't know, I never really understood you could have a voice in film because I hadn't really seen films like that, like films, I mean films where people like Danny Kubrick or Wes Anderson. Um, yeah, so that excited me and then also I made friends with some people in sixth form who were really into filmmaking, so that also kind of gave me an idea of how you could sort of go out and just make a film yourself. So for you it was about being kind of exposed to, yeah. to other filmmakers yeah, yeah. and seeing what could be made. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what about you, Alex? Um, so I guess I grew up watching film and loving film, um, and yeah, my passion was, was acting. Um, and so I did that throughout school and throughout university and when I trained as an actor. Um, and I guess it was a similar thing, it was starting to realise that actually uh, maybe I was allowed to make films as well, <laughs> maybe I was allowed to like be the instigator mm. of the, the story of the idea, because uh, I always sort of saw myself as, as serving that, um, but then over time I kind of was like, do you know what, I've got some stories to tell, I'm going to just do that mm. myself. Um, Great. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, my second question is, what advice do you give to emerging filmmakers? Sure, so um, my advice would be um, definitely enter as much as you can and go to as many network, uh, network, network nights <laughs> as you can. Yeah, which leads us on to spot night. <laughs> yeah. Spot night kids. Um, <laughs> the but, place to be. <laughs> but also, um, just make your films, like even if you don't get into those funds, because I think it's easier to feel disheartened because so many people enter those. But so you're talking about like film festivals yeah, and definitely. competitions? Yeah, I think competitions are really good because they set you a deadline, but even if you don't necessarily get through to, I guess, like the final six or whatever, um, yeah, it's good because then you have your script, but you should just definitely go out and make it anyway. I just mean, that's, the experience of, of trying has... Yeah, I mean, that's, that's what I did. I just went out and shot my own stuff regardless, so... Yeah, yeah I would agree with that 100%. Um, I think that the industry uh, seems like a very daunting thing um, and I think a lot of people wait around uh, hoping somebody's going to give them permission to make their film, somebody's going to just fly along with a magic briefcase full of cash and give it to them. Mm. That's not going to happen. So you've just got to make what you can with what you can mm -hmm. and hope that as you keep going people start to kind of maybe give you money or you know help you in, in some way. Did you just um, have your own cameras or you knew people? You know, in terms of crew and things? Uh, I, I had a camera for a while. To be honest, uh, it was this kind of sacred object that I never really used because uh, I was terrified of. Um, my first film I did make on, make on my camera. I rented a camera through the DOP. He had a good deal with the, the rental house. Um, mm -hmm. So we struck a deal and, yeah, I just kind of put all my money into making the film, basically, um, and ate soup for a while. <laughs> 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 Yeah, which leads us on to some uh, funding questions, but we'll save those mm. for our spot night event. Mm. So that leads me nicely on to my third question, which is how do you go about sourcing actors and crew for your film? Uh, with crew, my, my experience is uh, just sort of getting a couple of key people involved, um, you know, really your heads of department, I suppose. And very often they will know people of their department. This is at your and school or film school or whatever, is it? Uh, just random people on the street. I mean, like, <laughs> uh, I think so much of this sort of world is about knowing people. So you've kind of got to go to things like networking things mm -hmm. and meet a director of photography. If you don't know a director of photography, you've got to find one. And mm -hmm. they're probably not going to find you. So, um, yeah, and then going by word of mouth, people recommend people. Um, you meet people socially who are kind of like, oh, we get on well. Um, and then actors, because I come from an acting background, I usually just cast my friends. Um, <laughs> or oh, they have out, it on tape. <laughs> or just reach out through agents, like yeah. for, for some of the more well-known actors that I didn't know before. 
just send them a script, act as like acting. Mm. Yeah, because you've worked with, both of you have worked with some quite interesting names, mm-hmm. you know, Lady Garden and um, Tim McKinnery and whatever. Yeah, did you know them already or have you went to approach them with a script? No, so I produced a comedy night and I basically just asked people that I wanted to work with to perform. Mm-hmm. So, I yeah, that's how I met those comedians, um, just because I think they're great and I wanted to, yeah, and I guess it was like a more professional way to meet them rather than me sort of going up like a punter at the end of a show and being like oh do you want to be in my film so I thought (laughs) that would be a slightly more I guess approachable way to do it but for finding crew I mean I went to uh, film school like I did did like a BA on so most of the crew I work with I met there but I mean I the DP that I just worked with contacted me through Twitter and also the writers that I just worked with I messaged them through Twitter so I think, yeah, social media has definitely like opened so many doors like to meeting people to work with. That's so true, yeah. And that way you get to keep abreast with what people are doing as well. So like mm-hmm. if you, I don't know, if you're friends with someone on Facebook or you follow them on Twitter, you're kind of like, oh, that DP who I met five years ago suddenly is shooting like BAFTA-nominated stuff. That's, mm-hmm. that's good to mm-hmm. know. Maybe I should have a coffee with them. You know, like you have to kind of keep abreast of everyone else's progress I think and, and who's doing what and who's available and who's developing Networking. similar sensibilities mm. to you and mm. stuff like that and I was going to say for cast actually some of the well some of the first comedians that I made friends with because I like improv comedy but I didn't really know anyone but I just typed improv London in on Google mm. and his face came up and yeah so I contacted him and now yeah I work with him quite a bit and that's sort of through that film I met other comedians and other actors so it's the same, I guess, essentially, like, now I am casting my friends, but, yeah, and, and also actors sometimes send me their showreels via email, so, yeah, if I think they, they, they click with a role, and, yeah, I have them sort of on file. So you're just kind of keeping abreast of things and, and, yeah. and being open to working with people and, and maybe asking people you might, you know, you'd like to work with. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, yeah, because I think you work best with people who you get to know on a sort of personal level, like, you know, they become your friends. Mm-hmm. So it's about uh, maybe kind of trying to trying to make friends with people who you respect and admire, rather mm-hmm. than like I don't know, people who you don't respect and mm-hmm. admire because they're probably not going to be very good friends mm-hmm. anyway. Do you know what I mean? Good lesson for life there. I like yeah. it. <laughs> I think something else. Sorry, I just wanted to add. I think yeah. something that's quite vital is that I think there's this kind of thing where it's like star chasing for like even I mean beyond like working with like name actors, it could just be like a DP who shot some amazing films. And obviously if they're happy to work on your low budget and they, and obviously you click then that's totally worth it but I think that there are so many good DPs out there and I think the most vital thing really is if you're working on low budget that everyone's in and aware that that's the film you're making because mm. I think that it's just that kind of thing you don't want people like clock watching on set you know like because they'll you be like oh yeah the that they're, the yeah exactly yeah. yeah well that's part of the joy of working on a low budget as well like the fact mm-hmm. that people have shown up at all suggests that mm-hmm. they're, they're passionate about the project. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas, yeah, I think once you start moving up the budget level, you know, people start treating it like a job because mm-hmm. it is a job. Like, that's what people yeah. do for their living. Mm-hmm. And it comes a point where they're like, well, you're paying me properly. This is a proper professional job. It's 5.30, I'm going home. Mm-hmm. Like, whereas on a low budget thing, people have invested already so much because chances are they're not getting paid their, mm-hmm. their usual professional rate. Um, so they're kind of willing to hang around more to dig in deeper and put in a bit more effort which is really nice um, I think that's yeah. one of the joys of mm-hmm. low budget filmmaking is that it becomes much more of a team effort so I've noticed um, you both have quite distinctive styles um, obviously you, you go for a kind of modern quite comic punchy dare I say feminist um, you know film style and and with some of yours it's more um, period particularly with fingers um, and then you have that very sort of stark black and white with synchronicity um, do you feel that's something you're conscious of pushing towards a style as directors or is it trial and error for you yeah I don't know I think every uh, for me personally uh, I've, I've tried to make films that are quite different from one another because I feel like I'm still learning how it works um, so every film that I've made I think has required a different style slightly um, and I guess while I'm trying to figure out what my 
style is, I suppose. Um, I, I just don't think I really want a style. Everyone says you need a style and you need a brand, and I, I don't want to do that. You're resisting that, are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm a comedian. <laughs> do what I want. <laughs> yeah, that's good. What about you, Kate? Yeah, so um, finding my style. Um, I guess, to be honest, like, I mean, when you start, I, guess, I think because a lot of the shorts, I guess, when you first start making your films, you'll look at, like, I don't know, like the BAFTA shortlist or stuff that's winning and all of it generally was quite serious and I couldn't really see my voice in any of those films but again, very much trial and error I did attempt to make some very bad drama films which are not very good uh, but then, I don't know, I've always loved comedy and I don't know, I've always been like drawn to like quite funny people and they're the people I kind of surround myself with uh, surround myself? surround mm. myself with you've got more than one self <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah but um, yeah, so sorry, so my thing was I think I don't know, it's weird, because I, I think it's good to have a voice, obviously, because I guess it's like a business thing, right? Because that's how they're going to sell you, and they'll be like, yeah, like, this is a, a you know, Kate Heron film or whatever, but mm. I don't think it's something you're conscious of. I think it's just where your interest lies, and then mm. I guess hopefully you're building on that. And, yeah. And I think as, as you maybe progress further into your career, you get, like, somebody will stick a brand on you. You know, mm. basically mm -hmm. your big breakthrough thing people would be like, well, we need someone who can do that thing, like that thing. Let's get the guy who did that thing. You and know? that's the way the industry mm -hmm. works, isn't it? They like to be able to box you and say, this is your brand or whatever. Well, it's just easier. Yeah. I think, yeah, I, think, I think it is a necessity, though. I guess when you get to a point where, you know, your agent selling you to a certain company, then I can see it is useful from that perspective. But I think creatively, oh. obviously, I don't sit down and with like a checklist and be like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. OK, so most of the characters are awkward in her films. So <laughs> what will the character be doing now? You know what I mean? Yeah. I think it's more just... I have an idea and I'm like, oh, I'm going to write. I mean, you said your voice and, uh, and, and your many yeah. selves. I mean, that's what happens in a sense. That's on the record. You're, yeah. you're doing mo well, multifaceted, creative uh, pieces. But you know, yeah. nobody has just one sense of self, is there? Yeah. Like the other thing I was going to say, though, is that all my films I have written with like my cast or the comedians that maybe are not performing in it. Collaborative. Yeah, yeah, so it's a very collaborative uh, like writing process. So it's not just like, this is my vision. It's mm. like I am collaborating with people. And then obviously in directing, like steering that until the final film. But yeah. I think it's something that probably happens over time as well. Like you, you sort of, uh, like a, a river. Like has lots of tributaries. I'm getting deep now. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> metaphorical. Um, no, but I guess as it comes closer to uh, to death, let's go with death <laughs> being C in this in this metaphor. Like it becomes a stronger channel. You know, like you start off with all these tributaries and you've got loads of ideas, and mm. eventually your work will start to kind of flow as one. I guess mm. the ideas kind of come together, and then. Yeah. You, end up you mean with each project, or do you mean over time? I think uh, apply it wherever you want, you know. <laughs> I just bring the metaphors, like you apply them. Yeah, that's a very, <laughs> so very nice. <laughs> it's deep death rivers. <laughs> yeah. Sure. It sounds very different to my writing process. Uh, <laughs> like, yeah, my writing yeah, process yeah. is complex. <laughs> so, on to our final question uh, What's next for you both in the pipeline? <laughs> You're throwing that to me, are you? Oh, yeah. um, well, right now I am I'm writing a screenplay, uh, which I've been commissioned to do, yeah. Um, so it's my first sort of professional writing gig, basically. Um, and it's a biopic about a woman called Isabella Blow, who was a fashion icon and stylist and editor. And, um, hats. Hats. She wore a lot of hats. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I've been researching that for the last few months and uh, I'm kind of coming towards the end of my first draft. So I think I've got another couple of months in that, uh, at least. Um, and apart from that, I've got a couple of shorts that I haven't written that I'd like to direct. You're just in your head at the moment. Well, yeah, people have sort of asked me to get involved. Um, Do so you find that now you've, you've put your own work out there, people are coming to you a bit more? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Um, also as an actor, mm. uh, I think people like to, people recognise that busy people get stuff done, mm -hmm. um, so if you can make yourself busy, then eventually people will be like, busyness, I see busy, come and join our busy, um, mm -hmm. and I think that's how it works, you're kind of working being on being proactive, sort of, being proactive, yeah. that's the only way to go, that goes back to question two, mm -hmm. like what advice, mm -hmm. just do it and just shut up. <laughs> do it and shut up, cool. <laughs> 
And what about you, Kate? What are you up to next? Um, so same, I'm writing a feature film. Well, I've written it. I'm just in the process of doing like redrafts and yeah, I'm at that point. And that is a comedy uh, about a woman who is writing a eulogy for her dead ex-boyfriend. Um, oh, and gee. then, yeah. Cherry stuff. Yeah, is that uplifting? <laughs> uh, yeah, and then I'm starting to write a new feature about a beauty pageant, but I can't say anything else about that. Um, and a sitcom script as well. I'm just writing a lot, basically. Mm. And oh, uh, I have a new short called Fangirl, which is written by Henrietta yes. and Jessica Ashworth, who are amazing, really good, funny writers. They wrote for Fresh Meat. Um, and it stars Steve Oram as a faded 90s pop star. And it's about a group of super fans who break into his house. So that has just gone out to the festival circuit. Brilliant. So um, yeah, please, please go watch it. Yeah. So that's it from us uh, here with the On The Spot feature. Um, you should join myself, Alex and Kate at the Spot Night event, which will be on the 24th of February at Omnibus in Clapham. Early bird tickets are only three pounds, less than a price of a drink. Uh, so come and join us and uh, hear me grill these guys on how to fund your short films, uh, funding or fiction. So yeah, thanks very much. See you then. Thank <laughs> you.